Mortgages should be illegal because you're getting robbed every month. With a typical $200,000 30-year mortgage, you'll end up paying over $400,000 after interest. Hi, I'm John Commuta, creator of the Transforming Debt into Wealth system. My proven system can eliminate your mortgage and all your debts. Let me send you a powerful free CD. For your free CD, call Introduction first. Here is the man who has the boxing world on fire right now. There isn't a person who doesn't know boxing. There isn't a person now who doesn't know the name Mayweather, who does know the name Mayweather, that doesn't know the name Zelenoff. Charlie Zelenoff, welcome to the show. What's up, man? What's going on? Everything is good. You know, uh, this is going to be a huge interview um besides you know your social networking um profiles your twitter your facebook your website you have not done any public interviews this is the first one i've been less accessible man i've just been uh, in the gym you know just been training and uh (laughs) knocking people out and doing what i do best yeah, and, and very impressive in, in one year's time, actually in less than 12 months' time, you've picked up 12 victories. Yeah, 12 wins. 12 very impressive wins. And eight, eight knockouts that um, out of all the fights uh, that took place, uh, yeah, they were all uh, KO or TKO. And I, I first want to congratulate you For, on thank your you. success. Uh, the year 2011 seems Appreciate to be your year. Uh, it's looking good with um, 2012, about 40 oh, days oh yeah. away. 
you're looking like uh, it's looking like 2011 is going to be the 13th round. 12 victories. The 13th round kicks in in 2012. But first, we'll get into the future. Let's get into the past. Okay. 2011. We go into January. You and I had a professional relationship with one of one another. Okay. We'll keep that aside. This isn't about you and I. This isn't yeah. about me. This is about you. Okay. The current UBF pound for pound champion. The current know. UBF junior middleweight champion. Yep. Talk to us. Know. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Talk to us and tell us how your year has got started. Well, um, the very first fight was uh, supposed to be Andrew Harley. And, um, you know, the whole story uh, on that was uh, a friend of mine, Scotty, confirmed it. When I hit the bag, Andrew Harley uh, did not want to get into the ring. And um, all that shit he talked, um, you know, he brought all these uh, haters to to the event, you know. I thought that was disrespectful. And, um, you know, the thing is, uh, all all these people saying it was a sucker punch, um, you know, he saw me coming, and uh, he got up. He may have been putting on his jeans before, but he got up. And uh, I hit him right in the jaw, and uh, that was all she wrote. <laughs> that was it. And, and there's um, the video that you put out, his arms hanging out, and uh, it's clear to see that he was knocked out, so... Uh, to all the people that say he wasn't knocked out, uh, you guys are delusional. He, he, he was knocked out. Uh, the Scotty said he was on the floor for 10 minutes. And there you go. I raced that past uh, with a Harley. Never lost to him. That, that was, you know, that was no contest. Everybody knows that. I'm undefeated. You look at my box rack. And uh, and I am. I actually right now Charlie's on off, and I want to kind of get. I want to ask some questions uh, about that fight. Um, somewhere after this interview, but I want to kind of go in a chronological order. Okay. If you go to the UBF, the official UBF.blogspot.com, your official UBF box rec. Yeah, I'm on there for everyone to see. Uh, Great accolades, great achievements and accomplishments that are being shown on that box rec. Fight of the air, yeah. Uh, some interesting pictures, videos, you know, you can check it out. And a lot of people are tuning into this website. But you go into your next victory. Now walk us through this. It says, Chris Cut victory, DQ forfeit. Walk us into that one as well. Um, okay. Well, first of all, that kid uh, doesn't even deserve a mention. He, he's, he's a bum, you know, like I said, a Knocked uh, his older brother out, but uh, yeah. Well, um, he agreed uh, to um, to fight me, and um, he um, he saw me. I was with a friend of mine at uh, the Astro Burger, and uh, he saw me, and he started. He just walked away. I challenged him right on the spot. You know, I wanted to knock him out right there, and the dude just kept walking and walking. And uh, when you agree to fight somebody, and then you walk away, uh, that's considered a loss. So like a forfeit loss. So I agree. You know, if he didn't walk away, you know, we all know what would have been the result anyway. So um, yeah. You know, well, was, you know what? Uh, it, this kind of reminds me. Now, you know, I don't want to get too much into it. You know, you are uh, scheduled for a fight in 2012, a mega fight. But it looks like, you know, you're looking to take one brother out in 2012, followed by taking the other brother out. But it looks like you took a pair of brothers out in 2011 so far. We'll get further into the other brother, but Chris Cutt was number two as far as wins for Charlie Zonoff in 2011. Yeah. But I want to move to the next one. He was in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, yeah. No, you were, no, no, I'd dude. say, your second of the year, your second most impressive boxing performance, dominating performance, a guy that I'm going to tell you now has lied about his weight and his size. A oh, guy yeah. who looked around to be six foot three, six foot four inches tall, well over the cruiser weight limit Act, of yeah. two hundred pounds. Actually, I found out his real height and weight. Yeah. He's um uh, that guy that um Carlos Vasquez. 
Yeah. He is 6'5", 240 pounds. Carlos Vasquez, 6'5", 240 pounds. Yeah, he's one of the coolest. He defeated this guy man. by technical knockout one with some of the most vicious and hellacious punching I have ever seen in boxing. Um, yeah, I went tell crazy us that fight. Way. I know it didn't last long. It didn't wasn't long. Yeah, so well, it's not, you can't. That that was actually one of my one of uh, my best wins by far. You know, despite him having that gear. You know, he had the gear on in the ring, and I was like, what the fuck's he wearing? And whatever, you know, I got in there and still whooped his ass, and it, it didn't help him. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's You know, it's uh, it's called a body protector, but it didn't protect him. No, it, and, um, it sure didn't. The guy was lifeless in the corner on the road. Yeah, I, I came in there just like, you know, that's my style. You know, that's um, that's how I planned to, you know, uh, knock out um, Vladimir Klitschko, like just come out and guns blazing. I was 100% for that fight. I came out attacking his body, and uh, he couldn't deal with it. And even though I was throwing power shots, there was uh, some finesse added to that, though, you know. There was, like, technique and stuff. You know, everybody could see that I, that I have boxing skills, that, that I'm not just a power puncher, you know what I mean? The, the j- I landed a few jabs on him. But, uh, yeah, the ref, the ref waved it on him, and, uh, you know. He couldn't take it. If he, if he didn't have that body gear, he, I would have completely uh, broken all of his ribs. Yeah, well, the, the, there was a reason why that happened. And, uh, you know, very impressive. It's one of the ones I've watched that video over and over. And, again, definitely impressive uh, sheer power and boxing skill display. Yeah, and, and another thing I forgot to add is um, he hit me with his best shot while I was uh, landing on him. He he hit me, like, right in the temple, man. This guy is, who cares? People are so fucking stupid. They're like, oh, who's you beat a nobody? This guy is 240 pounds, 6 foot 5. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That kind of, you know, a punch like that lands on anybody. It can knock them out. I just walked right through it and uh, stopped him after that. And TKO'd him. The, the ref waved it, and that's it, you know. That was it. And I remember that you were using stellar head work, and I remember uh, head movement in that fight. And I remember that 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 right hand that he caught you with. No, it was a left. It was, a, it was actually left a left hand. I'm sorry, it was left straight, uh, and and you just walked right through it. Yeah. Very impressive with that, Charlie. Thanks. You go through three more victories up into the next fight. I want to talk about your dominating TKO victory over Roderick Smith, uh, another heavyweight and former light heavyweight contender Derek Harmon. Oh yeah. But then you go. You go over to – we can touch on those fights, but the, the fight Roger, that I wanted to get into was the fight afterwards. You yeah, well, let me start gym. with uh, – Roger Smith, well, what happened was um, <laughs> very random. I was walking up to, to my gym, and uh, this guy, Roger Smith, uh, he sees my – I was like – I don't know, I had like my belts with me. And um, he was like, what kind of belts are those? And I was like, UBF. He started asking me all these questions, right? And then um, he follows me up to the gym. And then he goes, let me see some of your fights. So I show him that, that fight that we were just talking about with uh, Carlos Vasquez, the heavyweight ITKO. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, that dude's a bum, man. He's like, I bet you. He's like, I would take him out easily, too. And he started running his mouth, right? And uh, I tell him, hey, the gym's right here, man. I'm like... Hey, we could lace them up right now. And um, that's it. You know, we went to the gym, and uh, he squared up. I squared up, and I hit him with five body shots. And then right after that, he started running away from me. I get, Roderick Smith is uh, 6'2", 230 pounds. He was a big dude also. And, um, you know, he was running away from me the whole time. I caught up to him. Hit him with a 1-2, landed on his shoulder. You know, he was running away. It was hard to catch him. You know what I mean? So I hit him in the shoulder, and he just dropped, and um, that was it. He got up, and he's like, I've had enough, man. I, I, he just quit, so it was a TKO right there. Congratulations on that. Yeah, you thanks. go into the next fight. You go into the next fight. You face. Oh, uh, oh man, that was <laughs> – well, you, everybody heard the witness. That Honestly, that was um, that, that a phenomenal uh, victory right there when I knocked out that 6'4 heavyweight. Six four, um, over two hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah, yeah. The, the witness that, muscle. that dude, um, 
Oh, there was a lot of people. I man, I I just wish that shit was recorded. It was two punches, man. It was two punches. Um, basically, what happened was, I was working out at the LA Fitness. I come out and um, look, I never even seen this guy before. I had no idea who he was, and um, he just starts uh, threatening, cursing at me. Uh, you know, yelling all, all kinds of shit like I'm gonna kill you and I'm, I'm gonna fuck you up, all this, you know. And I'm trying to figure out like who he is. I'm like, well, you know, who the fuck is this dude, you know? And um, I had my camera in my pocket, but he was already running up on me. You know, what am I? Gonna, how can I record that? You know, the guy's about to attack. So um, what happened was I squared up and uh, I put my belt down real quick and I squared up and, and he squared up and uh, I hit him with a right hook, right on his jaw. And the dude like like literally like spun. He did he fucking spun literally, man. And he swung he swings back at me. I'm surprised I didn't knock him down after that punch. He he swings back at me, and um, he misses, and I counter. Like right when he misses, I connect. Like fuck, man. If that shit was on video, oh man, that that would be amazing. Like I connected again, same punch, overhand right, right on his chin, and he drops. Just like you hear the witness say, and he was out cold for five minutes, man. I put out a six four two twenty pounder cold for five minutes. Man. And, and to got those up, bounce, man. To those who say you're not ready for Klitschko, they're crazy. Uh, they got another thing coming because if if you're not if you're doing this, it doesn't matter. I which swear to God, that that be both Klitschkos. No, I and I and I remember I seen the uh, witness testimonials. And, you know, again, i got to congratulate you on that. Moving on to the next one. Again, light heavyweight contender Derek Harmon. I remember seeing some videos uh, basically hyping up the uh, this fight. You were going to go to Las Vegas. Well, what happened was um, Derek Harmon, um, yeah, I just wanted a warm-up match. And I, I started calling these gyms and... Uh, I ended up uh, talking to his trainer, and he's like, uh, I trained Derek Harmon. If you want, you can just uh, have a fight against him. I'm like, perfect. You know, he's a big name. He's fought uh, Prime Roy Jones on pay-per-view. Everybody knows that. And um, then Derek Harmon called me personally on his cell phone. And uh, we agreed, uh, you know, to have a fight and everything. Uh, no headgear and stuff, referee. And... Um, he agreed three times. Like, I just called him again just to make sure, you know, that he's not going to back out and bullshit, right? So then, a few days pass, and he goes and sees my videos of me hitting the, the bag and you know, all that stuff. And then he just, like, for no reason starts talking shit to me, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, well, why would he Why would he do that? I, I never disrespected him, you know, I ne- to back out of the fight. You know what I'm saying? He did that so he could, um, he's not going to openly call me and be like, hey, you know, Charlie, you punched way too hard, dude. I I, I just, I can't take that power, so I'm just going to back out, man. He's not going to say that, even though that's the truth. He's just going to fucking start shit, and, um, you know, that's what he did. And he started a feud with me, right? And uh, he just went on Twitter and said he's not fighting. A few days passed, and uh, he calls me to go to the wild card. I show up to the wild card, and he's not there. And then uh, the UBF just counted as a forfeit victory for him. There you go. And that basically, if you look right there, uh, you know, you had some victories, uh, impressive victories over guys like Mo Ganu, Akeem Akinbode, two guys, you know, uh, Nigerian boxing superstars. Uh, yeah, those you know, guys Carlos Vasquez, you got your revenge. Uh, victories over Chris Chris Cudd, Andrew Hartley. You get Derek Harmon. Now, Derek Harmon, again, a lot of people have, you know, criticized you in the past and say, Charlie, you know, you're, you know, you're, I think at the time you were 10-0, and 0, if I'm not mistaken, 11-0. and 0. Uh, Let me count. My math, my math is bad. Oh, but, you know, uh, in that general area, 2, 4, 6, 14-0. Yeah. They, Derek Harmon had went. A lot of rounds with Roy Jones Jr. was actually ranked as one of the top five best light heavyweights in the world in his in his time. It's a good victory. It's a good name. Definitely. Followed by another good name. It's yeah, a very famous the, name. Actually, a guy that same who, day. <laughs> a guy who's a, a, a famous uh, assistant trainer to Freddie Roach. This is a guy who was in the gym working with guys like Manny Pacquiao, Amir Khan, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., 
And I'm talking about Shane Langford. And this is Shane Langford who you've had a couple of run-ins with, a couple of verbal altercations with in the past. Yeah. You put him out again. It seems like <laughs> you, you yeah, know, nobody's I, lasting around. I beat that anymore. little bum up, man. <laughs> well, what happened was, um, look, I, when Derek Harmon um, wasn't there, I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to hit the back. And then uh, I signed, uh, you know, they asked me to sign that waiver, whatever the hell, signed it, hit the bag, and uh, this dude just starts talking shit to me out of nowhere, you know? He just starts running his mouth. And I didn't even say anything back to him. I just hit him. I just hit him right there. And then um, he tried to he tried to tackle me. And then three people grabbed me and tried to, and then I just started, um, I just kept punching him over and over, man. I hit him, like, with, like, four or five shots on, on his head and knocked his ass out, man. And, Three people at a, the whole damn gym, the whole damn wild card, had dragged me away because uh, you know I could have fucking killed that little dude. Man. And I think right there, that right there, it's one of the famous territories you've invaded and dominated. Yeah, if, Pat, if one Manny of Pacquiao own. was there, I would have done that to him. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would. And I and you know my thoughts on uh, a possible alter care, a possible uh, showdown between you and Manny Pacquiao. But you pick up more victories after that. You pick up before oh, that yeah. after Shane Langford, you pick up a couple more. Another victory uh, that same underground day. Victories. That same day, and, yeah. Walk us through that. You 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 face the middleweight. You face the well, middleweight with here, this one. This one was uh, oh this this was real <laughs> one of the most brutal knockouts I ever uh, I ever scored. You know, and um, I, I go to the club right. You know, and I obviously thought that was it. You know, I had two wins in one day, one forfeit win, one knockout win. I'm thinking, okay, that's it. You know, apparently that wasn't it. You know, I'm walking uh, to my house, and uh, this black dude with dreadlocks. You know, never seen him before. No idea who he is. He was about my size, six foot, one sixty, one sixty two. You know, about that size. And um, he starts running his mouth, right? He gets up, he's like, what's up? And I'm like, what? And then he goes, I thought you said something. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And then, and then that's how it started, right? And he picks up his hands, and I'm like, one second. And I had that uh, shirt, uh, What You Know About Titles. Uh, you know, the UBF made it mm-hmm. and stuff. So I took off my sweater, and I, and then he was like, oh, shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's me, I'm world champion. And then I pick my hands up. And all of a sudden, this dude, like, his eyes go from, like, he goes from Billy Badass to, like, to a big pussy, like, oh, shit. You know, he just gets scared all of a sudden, you know? And he goes, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to box you. He turns around and, uh, you know, grabbed him by his uh, sweater. And I didn't hit him from behind. I waited till he turned back around, right? He turned back around, and I just uppercut the shit out of him. I uppercutted him with my full force right in his jaw. Like, with one punch, I broke his jaw, man. Like, it was flushed. Like, boom. Then I hit him again. Then a second time. Then a third uppercut. And then a fourth uppercut. And then a fifth uppercut. And, and I knocked his ass out cold right on my street, man. Swear to God. Man. Like, I, I, I thought... I, I demolished him, man. This, and this dude was, was not, you know, no pussy. He, was, he looked pretty tough, though. Win number sixteen. Yeah, that was, that was that was. A, I mean, like the thing is, like, it was just random fights, man. I mean, uh, hell, if I knew, the, I need to get a camera crew to follow me everywhere I go, so all these fights can be recorded from now on, man. And you and you with you mentioning that, I know after the Shane Langford victory, you wanted to take the rest of the year off. You picked up uh, quite a few victories in that year, and you figured, hey, that's enough. Yeah, so you pick up the victory over that uh, uh, yeah. the, the guy with dreadlocks. Yeah, the dreadlocks. In one dude. day, about a month later, if I'm not mistaken, you pick up two victories in one day. You go to a gym. And yeah, I went to champions. James Tony's gym. And James Tony's gym. And there's two guys that are champions in their respective division. At first, yeah. they decide, hey, we're going to get in the ring with you. Contracts are signed. You're getting ready to get in the ring with the guy who's a super middleweight, a guy who is closer to your weight. He backed yeah, well, Tell us about this one. What, what happened there was, um, you know, uh, 
I've been getting messages on YouTube. Uh, people are telling me, hey, Charles, you should go uh, beat up James Tony. He trains at the IFC gym out here in Van Nuys. It's, you know, uh, close to where I live, uh, you know, Hollywood, California. And, um, you know, I called him, and um, they told me James Tony does train there. And uh, I said, uh, I did I want to fight him, you know, get it recorded? I'm like, were you guys allowed, allowed uh, recording and stuff? And they said, yeah, yeah, sure, come over. And they were pretty disrespectful with me on the phone, you know. So then I, I go there, and uh, they tell me James Tony went to go uh, fight Dennis uh, Labidov in Russia. He wasn't there. So I said, it's okay, you know, just put put any heavyweight there in front of me. You got the put the toughest heavyweight you got. And uh, there was some, some heavyweight they had there. And, uh, you know, the super middleweight, it was later, right? And then the heavyweight signed a waiver to fight me. But then they told me that the, the fight cannot happen until the owner comes. And until the owner, you know, he has, to, he has to see it. He has to, you know, like, sign all that shit, you know? So I waited and waited and waited. So then I go hit the bag, right? And not even with my full power. I just hit the bag, I'd say, with 70% power because I didn't want to mess up my hands before the fight. And, um, yeah, the... This guy didn't want to get in the ring, and then um, the super middleweight. I mean, you all saw it. I got it. I got it on camera. I got proof that he didn't want to get in the ring. He he just backed out, and and they both signed uh, waivers to, to fight me. So since their signature was on there, and they refused to get in, like when you sign to get in the ring with somebody, and then you don't want to get in the ring with them, that's that's considered a loss on your part, correct? So there you go. The UBF. Um, Counted uh, two wins right there for me, so that's eighteen and zero. Eighteen and zero. You pick up two wins in one day. Very impressive. Seems like nobody wants to fight you. Uh, yeah. But after y- your next victory, your oh next shit! Fight, <laughs> probably best one, man. Satisfying, <laughs> uh, sweetest victory, and, and and I and I know this from personal experience. Uh, it's a guy that you've known from since you were a child. Yeah. You've grown up, uh, and this is a guy who would torment you. And you being a professional boxer, you being very dangerous with what you do in your profession. Ole Cut, another one, uh, you know, claims to be a, a boxer, uh, uh, and a mixed martial artist. He's a joke. That's what he is. That's all he you, is. You, 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 you dealt with his torments for years, and oh, you yeah. bit, you bit your tongue, you bit your fist. And you just brush the dirt off your shoulder, but this is on this one fair day, right outside of a Best Buy. You couldn't take you, you know, you stands enough, but you couldn't stand no more. Old way cud pissed you off for the last time. You picked up I the nineteenth victory, Frank. Tell I knew the happened. day. I knew the day was coming, man. Like I didn't know when, but I knew it was coming. I just knew that one day I would knock his ass out. And, and October 19 was that day. What happened, um, like I said, I went to Best Buy. You know, um, I'm walking back uh, to my house, and I see Oleg Kud on his bike. And uh, he sees me, and, you know, I, I, once I'd seen him, I already knew that's it, you know. And he's like, what's up, Charlie? And see, <clears throat> for legal purposes, I, want, I was waiting for him to start shit. Because, you know, if I just came, ran up and attacked him, you know, he could have pressed charges and everything, right? So he makes a U-turn, and um, we started talking. And I tell him, oh, like, you're not on my weapon, man. I'm like, I'm fighting Klitschko, dude. I'm like, you're a goddamn photographer. I'll kill you, man. I'm like, what, what are you doing even standing here talking to me about fighting, man? Your name shouldn't be mentioned in the same sentence as my name, right? And he just kept yapping his mouth and stuff. He's like... At first, what what I told him was, I'm like, hey, you know what? Let's walk over to my house and my dad will record me and you fight and uh, I'll knock you out and we'll put it on YouTube. That way people see me beat your ass. And he said, okay. And then he grabs his phone as soon as he saw that I agreed. You know, he's like, oh, but I got to go pick up a friend. And then he goes, you know, Charlie, if you really wanted to, you'd do something right now. And I'm just, and I'm thinking like, hmm, let's see. Well, this is my only chance to whoop his ass, so, you know, I got to do it. And uh, I come up to him, 
and uh, at the time my PSI was 4,200, uh, you know, and I'm like, 4,200, I'm like, I can take anybody, I can beat anybody. He's like, yeah, but you you haven't knocked me out. And I'm like, I can beat anybody. He's like, yeah, but not me. And as soon as he, as soon as he said, not me, I just came up and he saw me coming and I hit him with a one-two. And uh, Oleg literally flew onto the road from the sidewalk to the road. I mean, he flew onto the road, I swear to God. I mean, it was crazy. That's how hard I hit him. And um, he got up, which was amazing. I can't believe He got up, and um, he tried to take me down. Like, <laughs> he, he went for, like, an MMA takedown, and I and he, he failed miserably. Uh, I sidestepped him, and uh, I hit him in the shoulder. And uh, that was it. That was all she wrote, like I said in the video. <laughs> I dropped him with, uh, just by landing on his shoulder because I threw with so much power that if I hit him in the face, I would have literally fucking killed him. And I connected on his, uh, that was it. He dropped and um, that's it, man. It was the, the easiest, but uh, I'd say uh, that that ranks up there as one of, the, one of my best wins. If not, yeah, that's knocking out Oleg. Because he was my enemy, you know what I mean? Uh, your most like, satisfying victory. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean... He deserved all this shit, man. It's like um, he he lied. Let me clear things up, right? He lied to everybody. He never. He look, man. Him and his brother jumped me from behind. The, the there was never me and him never had a fight before. It was I was walking home with my backpack. He, he I had no idea he was coming. He hit me from behind. He never knocked me out in any kind of fight. He lied to everybody. Me and him had a legitimate fight on the street. And I knocked his ass out cold. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Um, there, there's actually um, somebody came up to my friend Scotty, a friend of Oleg, and said that I broke Oleg's jaw. A friend of Oleg said that that Oleg went to to get his uh, to get dental treatment because I hit him so hard that, that uh, his jaw was wired. And I actually want to touch on that there. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of people, you know, you had, a lot, you had fans, you have uh, enemies, haters out there that, that investigate. Oleg Cud for days in at a time, was unavailable, would oh, yeah. not comment. Uh, nobody had seen a picture because, you know, yeah. he's a photographer. He's always putting up new photos. Of course, of it was obvious. It was obvious. He did not comment. He said, just leave me alone. You know, was, congratulations. Very I remember that, and I remember even being the one to tell you, hey, don't stoop to his level. He's just trying to test you. But, hey, he tested yeah, the wrong guy. Yeah, I know. I remember um, there's been many people who have, have told me that he's been uh, acting like, um, you know, it's been, it was pretty obvious that he, he got his ass beat, and, you know. Like, as soon as I put out those videos that I, I knocked Oleg out. Well, with you living close, have you – Ran in the whole leg ever since that day. No, well, I'm sure that um, I, the, I, I'm unless he has a death wish, you know, <laughs> he'll never come up to me again. The you know I, I broke the guy's jaw. I don't I don't think he'll want to come up to me again after that. I mean, that that would be a uh, and, and for his brothers too. I don't I mean, uh, Chris. I mean, the, I don't think Chris wants to follow in his footsteps, man. <laughs> Good win, man, and, and congratulations on that. Thanks. Yeah, that that was that was a win I had to to you know get to knock Oleg out. That was just like I said, the day I knew the day was coming, man. That's it. Well, after that fight, you celebrated. You made some videos. You posted oh, yeah. on on Twitter. You, you 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 made it known that that was your victory. That was the most satisfying victory. And you decided, hey, I'm done. Again, sure. once again, this is. Like the tenth time in 2011, you said that's your last fight. Yeah. Stuff keeps happening. So I've been made decide, a hat. Hey, <laughs> They've been uh, the go to again, no hat. <laughs> that I was like, that's it. You know, the UBF's making another shirt, greatest of all time. That's it. I'm done for the year, man. <laughs> well, you come out to you, you you plan a trip to come out Vegas. to Vegas to celebrate, to relax at your yeah. playground outside yeah, of Los Angeles. I, I stopped training. I only trained one time. After that, um, to this day, my um, 
my pinky finger is still messed up from knocking Oleg out. That's how hard I hit him. I dropped him with a wet hook. So, um, yeah, anyways, I went to Vegas just to celebrate, you know, meet new girls and stuff. I, I, I did not go there to, to fight anybody, man. But um, <laughs> we all know how that turned out. <laughs> Well, what, 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 and to this day, now, you know, it's on this actual network, there was a big show, a very popular show that went on. Uh, it had a lot to do with your opponent on that, that very trip. Had one of your past opponents as well. Um, you know, they, they've said some stuff. But walk us into it. You know, everybody had their side of the story. And, you know, the, the other people on the other side, it did seem – that everybody had some sort of a different story and they were supposed to be together. It kind of seemed fishy. It kind of seemed like they took a bite out of a sour apple. And if you don't know what that means, it means they were a little bit bitter. Uh, You go to train at a local gym close to the Las Vegas Strip, known as the Hit Factory. Yeah. You say, hey, you know, you go there, you know, you heard Hasim Rahman train there, and you figured, hey, I'll go in there and get some work with Haseem Rahman to prepare for Vladimir Klitschko. Yeah. Haseem Rahman wasn't there. No, he wasn't. Well, well, yeah, I just, um, I was supposed to meet Cassius Green, who's uh, nothing but a liar, and uh, he, he, Cassius Green's a bum, man, I'll say it publicly, he, he's a bum, that's it. But anyways, uh, he's not um, relevant. Uh, I went in there. And um, Hasim Rahman, I asked if he was there. I was like, I want to spar Hasim Rahman. I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko. And they were like, which one? I'm like, both of them. I'm like, hell, him, his son, whoever, you know. But bring both of them on. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. And then um, they're like, but you're you're only a middleweight. And then when I started hitting the bag, the they, they hit factory guys, they shut their mouth quickly. And um, I just kept on training and training. And I literally just like... Gave out. I was so tired. I was like, you know, those videos of me hitting the the bag with a extreme force, you know, because um, like I said, I had no idea I was gonna have a fight that day. So I just um, I was really tired. I threw every punch just to show them how powerful I am. And then uh, Cassius Green shows up uh, to train some of his amateurs. I don't know one amateur kid he was training, holding the mitts with, whatever. And then uh, Cassius Green's like, I'm going to take you to one gym. And I was like, what gym? He was like, nah, just, you know, I'll take you there. I'm like, whatever, you know? So we get in the car. Um, the the amateur fighter that Cassius Green was training, uh, his mom drove us there. And then uh, to that Johnny Tacos. We go there. Well, famous and, uh, Johnny Tacos. A lot of the best to train there. Mike Tyson had many of his training camps there. World yeah. famous gym, the oldest gym, the oldest boxing gym still standing in Las Vegas. I'm yeah, right. yeah, Johnny Taco. So, um, you know, I go in there and I see all these people, and I just like uh, they're all looking at me and shit. You know, I just had a feeling something was gonna go down. And uh, again, I was hitting the bag over there. I was training over there. I'm just hitting the bag real hard. And um, Floyd Mayweather Senior, he's just sitting there watching me hit the bag, right? And he goes, you know, you got power. It's obvious you got power. And then he he starts talking shit. He's like, but you ain't got no skills. He's like, you got knockout power, but where are your skills at? And I'm like, I got more skills than anybody you know, man. I tell him that, right? And then I tell him, you know, I'm fighting Vladimir Klitschko, and uh, I've knocked out many heavyweights this year. He's like, cool, cool. You may knock out any heavyweight. He's like, you may knock out heavyweights. I'm not doubting you. But I can guarantee you one thing. You can't knock me out. Floyd Mayweather Senior t- tells me that. And I start laughing, and I'm thinking, like, wow, I'm like, should I really, like, I'm really tired, you know. I'm, like, not at my best right now. I'm just, you know, but at the same time, I'm thinking he's asking for it, you know. He He's asking for an ass whooping. And I looked around, and his, his whole posse's there, all these, you know, all these guys are there, you know. His whole, I, I came there, uh, Curtis wasn't even there, nobody, nobody from my team. I mean, it was just me. I mean, how many fighters, how many prize fighters would come down 
to someone else's turf all by themselves without their camera crew, just by themselves, solo. Nobody would do that. Nobody would have the heart to do that, you know? And I'm thinking, um, yeah, and I'm like, whatever. I'm like, whatever. I'm like, I'll get in the ring. Whatever, get in the ring. He, I had 10-ounce gloves. He, had, he puts on eights. I'm like, whatever, he can have the eights, you know? And this is the footage. In the very beginning, Cassius Green was not resting. There was no rest in the very beginning, correct? The bell rings, and I rush Floyd Mayweather Sr., and I hit him eight times in his jaw. Eight times, man. They all have the footage, man. All, all these all these people at the, all these Mayweather people in, the, in his camp, whatever, they all have the footage. That bum Lido Rose, he has the footage. They're not putting it out because they all saw what happened. I know the truth. They, you know, they all seen it. I landed eight hooks in Mayweather Sr.'s face. And um, just like you saw in the video, his knees buckled. His knees buckled right there. He grabs me, and he tries to tackle me. You know, like, I'm thinking, what the hell is he trying to do? It's not a clinch. He literally tried to tackle me because he was getting his ass beat. And then I said, referee, referee. Cassius Green steps in, and, and you know, everybody's seen what, uh, what happened then. And uh, I did the same thing. I hit him again, and that's what, another eight punches in his face and then uh, one in his body. Total, that was nine. So that's 17 unanswered punches. Usually a fight would be stopped right there, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, you know, I just, I was at 30%, and I was still destroying him. I mean, everybody, nobody can deny it. I don't care what people say on the Internet. I mean, look, there's there's a mainstream article that says I, I destroyed me with a senior, so... That should show there, all now, you, you talk about mainstream, Charlie. I, I mean, to cut you off here, but this yeah, yeah. is as mainstream as it gets. And it was on the eve, this story, basically. It was a few days right before, which was considered a mega fight. Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez, which was a great fight in its own right. But up until the day of the fight, nobody was talking about Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel. We <laughs> yeah. knew there was a weigh-in. I don't even, I don't even think I heard anything about so these guys weighed in for the fight. Yeah, the, my the victory world. Took, took a lot of... Uh... Yeah, and out of the videos. Now, you were the first one to upload the video, and everybody, you know, it's out there in the Internet that you can take someone's video, you know, re-download it, and, uh, and then re-upload it and make it yours. A lot of people have done that. I did a little bit of a calculation, rough estimate, uh, estimation of everything. There is well over 1 million unique viewers worldwide that witnessed that, that wow. victory. Yeah, I, know. I would just say like this. Of... There's, not, there's not world champions who had fights of the year that get those type of views. There, yeah, was... and, and then look, and a lot, to the people, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying to be a biased journalist, Charlie. You and I know each other. We, we, we you know, on the radio show, this is your time to – explain your current career, your 2011, and what's going to happen in 2012 with yourself. A lot of people, you know, have this misconception about Floyd Mayweather Sr. Sure, he's not a 21-year-old, you know, hot prospect in the, in the professional ranks. No. He, he had his career cut short due to a gunshot wound, due to some bad choices as well. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather Sr. has always been a great athlete. And to this yeah. day, Floyd Mayweather Sr. in the gyms is known to show up younger fighters. Yeah. Elite world title You told me yourself uh, he beats up those guys in the gym all the time, and then I beat yeah. the shit out of him. Is that correct? Yeah. And if you look at it like this, Floyd Sr. is not built like an older man. He's not built like a 50-year-old man. Yeah. He's built like a 21-year-old. Sure, he's not 21, but he's built... Charlie Zelenoff went in there, and and I said, like, i seen a knockdown. His knee touched a canvas. He held on to it. It should have been counted. I don't know whoever was repping. Oh, yeah, that, that was a clear knockdown. The The first time I did that, with the foot of the data and release, he, his knees buckled, but he didn't touch the canvas. But the second time I did that, yeah, the, his knee, his right knee, it's, it's clear in the video. They uh, touched the canvas, and um, that's a 10-8 round for me. And after that, I didn't even have to 
boom, I won the round. And there was, <laughs> we all know there was only one round, so I won the fight. Um, but yeah, I was landing after that anyway, and he didn't he didn't do nothing to me. He landed one clean punch on me, which didn't even phase me. And the rest of the punches, um, the, they were just. They didn't even land, man. It was just like in the back of my head, just skin, skin. Was, his stupid crowd was was just hoping for him to make a comeback so much that, that look, man, it, he didn't do nothing to me. It, it was, um, had I been 100%, Floyd Mayweather Sr. would, uh, man, uh, shit, I would paralyze him. I, I, would, I would kill him in the ring, man. The, no, they well, you, you did. You won. Look, no matter what has anybody seen, uh, some people call it a sucker punch. And which here's the thing. Yeah. You, you go back to September 17th in Las Vegas. His son, Floyd Mayweather Jr., fought a guy named Victor Ortiz. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people said, "Hey, you know that punch Floyd Mayweather knocked Victor Ortiz out with was a sucker punch." Yeah. But his response was, "Protect yourself at all times." Floyd Mayweather Sr. Yeah. went publicly and said that the same thing. Victor Ortiz was not sucker punch, was protect yourself at all times. Yeah, he was You were pushed it. outside. You yeah. were, Floyd, Floyd was pressuring you in the corner, and you were basically pushed out of the ring. You never fell. You never touched anything. It was just you ducking, and, and you, 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 you no, were no, basically I never, pushed I was out always, of the ring. I stepped back in, and he knew. He took, look, you never, only an idiot turns his back in a fight, first of all. And the referee nope. who was there did not break you guys up. He did not try to separate it. The nope. referee stood aside, did not warn you, did not say, hey, don't do that. And you hit him. You hit him when I think it was a left hook. Uh, what yeah. I've seen in the video, I've seen a left hook. But, uh, yeah, those those uh, those scumbags, uh, they pointed the camera. I'll tell you what, man, those are some uh, good shots I finished them with. Uh, I hit him with a left hook. I mean, you could all hear it. If you watch the video, you could all hear it. It was a um, flush left hook and then a right hook on his chin. And then he turns around. So if he's such a bad motherfucker, why didn't he swing back? Uh, well, what, what happened was the video, a third I hook. Floyd Mayweather leaning and hanging on the ropes. Yeah, he turned uh, around. Basically like, holding his his face and looking like he wasn't continue, could continue. Yeah, and then the third the punch thing is, hit him right in the chin. And he flew against the ropes, and, and he was holding on to the ropes. He was out. He was done. <laughs> Funny, the guy so, that uh, finished the round, he was unable to, man. <laughs> that, that clear-cut victory for me, man, uh, no matter what anybody says. It's it's on no, record. And, and I'm going to agree with you there, and I want to get to this point live on the air, too, as well. Yeah. He was there. He couldn't continue. The referee did not stop the fight because something else ensued. You know, the UBS commissioners, the UBS official, officials went back with you to tape. And they scored that incident right there. But a lot of people are like, hey, hey, this is boxing. You know, Floyd Mayweather was unable to continue. But what happened after that? From behind, oh. you were attacked. Well, after yeah, training that. all day in a fight. And, you know, your nerves had to be. You are in hostile territory going up against a legend. You know, your nerves do play a factor. You did your yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. You won I know. the fight. Was... I'm never nervous was... when I fight. Like, I'll, I'll tell you this. Like, I'm never nervous, but this was a little um... – you know, I just didn't feel comfortable when I was there because um, I felt like everybody was against me, and and I still won the fight. You know, that's what made it. You know, that, that's what makes it still a, a great victory. You know, that I won in such hostile territory when everybody wanted to see me lose, but I still won. You know what I mean? It's like um, it's like an NBA team uh, playing on the uh, on the road. You know, when you win, you shut the whole crowd up, man. And if anybody wanted to argue, you know, for one, Floyd Mayweather couldn't continue, and you were attacked. Floyd Mayweather had outside interference, entered a ring, and in any boxing organization, in any boxing rule, anybody from anybody's corners, camp, comes in. Yeah, it's a DQ. It's a disqualification. So, yeah. you know, and if they like this, you, 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 the fight is recorded down as a technical knockout victory. Yeah. But if anybody wants to, dis, you know, disdain that, decision, Charles Dunnell still wins either way you look at it. Oh, yeah, I won no matter what, but, um, yeah, UBF counted a TKO, but, yeah, that, um, look, I thought the whole damn gym jumped on me. If I knew it was just that little prick that, that little old Rhodes, oh, shit, I would have gotten up and killed his ass. I, I thought a mosquito sat on me, man, after 
I knocked out May with a senior, man. I was like, this guy punches like a fucking female, man. This dude, he he's, he didn't even connect to me, anyway, man. He's he hit me in the damn glove, man. Anyway, uh, dude's a. That well, with Lionel fun. Rhodes, we know you don't. You just like Lionel Rhodes, you know, and he he. he Lionel Rhodes, if you listen to this, I will knock you out if I see you anywhere, man. I don't care if it's on the street. I don't care if it's at a weigh-in. I don't care wherever it's at, man. You're getting your job. Well, would you ever consider a tune-up fight before Klitschko, or are you just focusing anytime, any time? But on the, he has to come yeah. to my gym. He knows where my gym's at uh, because I'm the champion. I'm 20 and 0. Um, I'm on the front uh, cover of a magazine, magazine, not him. Not him. Uh, so the only way the only he gets way a shot at my title is if he comes to my, to L.A. That's it. Spoken like a true champion. And, you know, I got to congratulate you going chronologically through your Thanks. victory. Congratulations on that. If Lydell Rhodes is listening, Charlie Zelenoff, if you want to come, you want to crack at the UBF straps, I'll, I'll end his Hollywood. career, man. I'll, I'll end this. I'll end that kid's career. He'll never uh, fight again. He'll be in a wheelchair and shit. So. Well, look, if you can't, you can't. There's a comparison here. You're moving on. You're 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 fighting. Your fights in 2011 are basically concluded. You yeah, are. Uh, you have to cut holiday season coming up. Uh, to, so 2011, Charlie Delano ends the year. I know, I don't yeah. quote me on this. Who knows, you never man. know what can happen tomorrow. Hey, I might walk outside and knock all out again, man. <laughs> you never know. Hey, it might be the rematch. You never know. Uh, I don't know. But After this happens, interview, I might just walk outside and then, you know, boom, 21 and 0. <laughs> you never know hey, with this guy. But here, here's the thing. You have you have two fights lined up in 2012, January. Yeah. You make your first uh, appearance on the East Coast. Yeah, on the Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. You have a you have a tune up there to get you ready for Vladimir Klitschko. You got a large opponent, uh, I believe around six foot four. Yeah, six it should five. be a heavyweight, but you know, I d I don't really know the whoever they get me there, you know, doesn't matter. I'm I'm just gonna look spectacular. Yeah. This may be a tune up warm up match, whatever you want to call it. But um, I'm definitely uh, gonna be a hundred percent for this one and um uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm 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 gonna score like the score fastest like, knockout. Uh, I'm talking ten, fifteen seconds, man. It's gonna be over that quick, man. It's quicker than Tyson's KO. I'm getting that done there. Again, that's for the big showdown. You've been oh, yeah. in discussions. Belgrade. My goal, July, my dream. 2012. To knock out Vladimir Klitschko, man. It's gonna happen. That that's the main event, man. You proved to many people you deserve this shot. You have 20 wins, yep. 12 in this year alone. And, you, again, I've mentioned this in, in, in a video, and I've mentioned this to, to a lot of people. You are not going out there calling out just just these regular guys that, yeah, that I are saw that. I saw trying that. to test you. And, and these regular guys that wouldn't step up the face you, but you are calling out the best fighters in the world. You called out Pacquiao. You called out Mayweather. You called out Sergio Martinez, Andre Wood. None of these guys. Everybody, man. So, Cause everybody just either ignored the challenge or was just afraid. Yeah, just they said, no, sorry, too risky. So you called out Vladimir Klitschko. Me. Yeah, Klitschko took the fight. And Klitschko accepted the fight. You're in the negotiations right now as far as money is concerned. Yeah, he but did. It's, uh, for you, it's not about the money right now. But in this fight, oh, no. the money will come for you. Yeah, it's not. It's never. It's never about the money. It's you know, just uh, it's the pride. You know what I mean? The money's great and everything. I mean, everybody wants money, but you know, I'm doing it for the glory, man. I, I want when it's all said and done, I want to be remembered. Um, uh, you know, for, for the great to be the greatest fighter of all time, number one. That that's what I want. I don't want to be remembered. Oh yeah, I got the fattest paycheck, man. Paycheck. No, I, I got the greatest knockout. That's what I don't want to be remembered for. Yeah. And as of right now, Charlie, you know, you hold claim to the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And there's, you know, with with Mayweather and Pacquiao, though nobody know which one to put ahead of each other. Yeah. There's one guy that goes above, and that's you. Tell us oh, how it feels that. to know that you are better than these fighters that, you know, guys on ESPN, Friday Night Fights, HBO, Showtime. Well, How does it feel great. to be bigger than these guys? It feels great. I mean, the uh, thing is, um, 
Yeah, I have a history of calling out Mayweather and Pacquiao. <laughs> I mean, I look, I I would knock both of them out in the same night. <laughs> I hit too hard for them, and then not just that, but I'm faster than both of them, which is crazy because I'm a lot bigger than them. And I'm quicker than them. I hit harder than them. Uh, I just, um, you know, I'll knock both of them out. They're too small for me and stuff. Martinez, Martinez. You know, his same goes for him. Um, Mayweather and Pacquiao. Mayweather, Pacquiao. I think Mayweather is more Mayweather skilled than all three of them. But uh, yeah, yeah, as far as, uh, as, far as power, they power, none of them. Take none of them. Uh, so. So you're with that. You're there. You have uh, a re- yeah. You just you know debut a brand new T-shirt uh, to be yep. available for any fans who want to purchase. Uh, I believe if you go on the uh, UBS site, um, there's Sports information time. on how you can get in contact with somebody to get a shirt. You have oh yeah, the UBF. Just, uh, anybody that wants one, they just uh, they send me the money, and then the UBF mails them the shirt. It comes from New York, so you know. They just gotta post the address up and you know, boom and uh that's it. And the shirts are nice. This is what I think your fourth or fifth. Yeah, they're t-shirt. they're um the third ones. Uh, well they're they're making all kinds of designs, but these are the third actual ones that are out. So um you know, like as I've proven everything this year alone. I mean it's all solidified, uh pointing out uh magazines are coming out uh late February. March, uh, me on the front cover. This magazine will be for sale in stores in the UK and New York. And uh, I'm punching Vladimir Klitschko on the front cover. So, um, you know, there, there's still a few um, idiots out there saying, oh, this fight's not going to happen. Uh, yes, it is. It, you know, yes, it is. It's, it's definitely going to happen. You've proven them. You've proven got people a long time. And you've proven me wrong. I'm the man enough to admit you have proven me wrong. And you've proven thousands of people wrong time and time again. You are a world champion. If yep. you go on the uh, UBF, uh, the true top ten pound for pound. Even though I don't, I think Juan Manuel Marquez should be up a little bit more. I think he should be over Victor Ortiz. I don't even think Victor Ortiz is going to be top <laughs> yeah. ten. Yeah, you know, they got number right one there, right though. <laughs> number one's correct. I'll, I'll agree with that. You 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 have world record breaking feet. You have a PSI score out of this world. You have you yeah proof. The, you have proof. You have official documented government proof or whatnot. Yeah. And you also have proof for the the most amount of vicious hooks in one second. Now it's like yeah, that's I amazing that I could throw eighteen. Eighteen. Now I remember. You know, a few months ago, you were at nine, ten, yeah. and six. I remember your PSI went with seven fifty. <laughs> That's how that goes back. Seven fifty yeah. went to eight fifty, ten fifty, and it just exploded there. And I remember when it was at ten fifty, we didn't. And I remember I was with you, and I we didn't think that it could really get harder than that. And it did. It went almost five times to where you are twenty one pounds. From exactly two and a half. Five thousand, yeah. I'm like basically hitting five thousand. That's that's way too much power. Like, you know, if I was to, you know, a- anybody, I mean, there's just nobody. Um, people don't understand. They're like, oh, but how much do you weigh? It doesn't matter how much I weigh. I mean, if I hit any heavyweight, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, Nikolai Value. I mean, sure, Vitaly Klitschko may have a good chin, right? Sure. But, but not, but not if I if I hit him though, his, then he has a glass chin. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, that's just what it is, man. There's, there's just nobody out there who can beat me, and, and I'm gonna prove it, man. I mean, uh, I've already proved it, but I'm gonna prove it once I start knocking out all these top ten heavyweights on pay per view. Then people are gonna people are gonna see it, man. Well, that's that's what I've seen now. You know, you've stepped into an elite fighter, and you know, for me to interview you, I I try to only uh, associate and, and, and interview the best as far as being on shows, and you know, it's an honor. You know, I know, like as you and I have history, that's in the past. I I yeah. am enjoying the ride that is going on right now. That is the Z train, and watching everything new that you put out there. 
You are a star. You know, a year ago today, you were more accessible than you are. Anybody can basically get a hold of you. Now you are a star. You have to watch out. You know, you're you're basically on that A list level to where, you know, if you don't have somebody watching your back or if you don't stay low key, you know, you basically you can't get go go out shopping at a regular store without being hounded half the time. Yeah, so it, actually, it, what I forgot um, the other day, um, I was training and uh, the. You know, like everybody's that the taxi driver asked me to sign an autograph for his eight-year-old son, and uh, because I told him I'm fighting Klitschko, he's seen the greatest of all time shirt. So yeah, I, I, I signed a few autographs and stuff. It was pretty cool. You're 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 there, and I even remember your first trip, your first fight in Vegas, your first trip. You're taking pictures, and so you signed um, napkins and bars, and and I remember <laughs> this. You, you know, here's like this. You always, I always knew you had the star, star power. I didn't know that your star would shine as bright as it's shining right now. Charlie yeah. Zelenoff, you know, um, and there's nothing, there, there's nothing else else I can say. You know, I have to tell you this right now. I want to kind of get your final shout outs to your fans, your friends, your haters out there. But you know, for you to be on this show tonight on this interview again, this is a, a groundbreaking event here. Um, Definitely. I just want to show my appreciation. It's, it's very good to just sit, sit here and talk your career. You know, Charlie Zelenoff at this point, if you didn't believe in it before, you know, a week and a half ago when he defeated Floyd Mayweather, you believed it then. World oh, yeah. Star Hip Hop, every major boxing website, sports website, Dan Raphael was tweeting about it. It it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and big, and, and here you are today. July 2012, you fighting Klitschko, Charlie Zelenoff, take us home. That's right, man. Um, when I when I beat Vladimir Klitschko, um, that, like I said, that's gonna be it, man. I, I could retire that same night, and I'll be uh, considered the greatest boxer of all time, better than the likes of Ali and Ray Robinson. So, well, you are at, at this point, Charlie. You know, and this isn't just you saying it. You and I like your humbleness. You are considered, and as the song in the beginning said greatest of all time. There's nobody who can captivate an audience, who can generate the amount of, you know, fanfare, love, this love. You're there. And as is, I'm, I'm looking at some of your videos now, one of your videos says legendary. You're 23 years old and you're at that status. Yeah, I'm still young. I'm, I'm still I'm still 23 and um, um, yeah, that you know, the reason is uh, when I say, like, no fighter can and will ever beat me is because, you know, like, with that kind of power, that kind of speed, you know, nobody can take that, man. There's just no fighter that um, they can take my power and just, you know, be able to give something back because, you know, uh, nobody. I mean, like I said, when I was um, whooping on Mayweather Sr., that was not my best punches. And see... That right there, um, 30% of my power made his knees buckle twice and knocked him down. So the, you can just imagine if I was at 100%. Shit, you know. But, um, yeah, the Vladimir Klitschko fight, um, you know, he keeps his guard down. And, uh, you know that's not a good idea against me. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And, you know, and that's the thing is, is, is as this fight draws closer, people are going to be picking who they want to win. Um, I myself, I'm picking you to win. I pick you to win. I think your speed, your elusiveness is going to be too much for Vladimir Klitschko. I think once you connect with one of those uh, heavy shots in space, in some capacity, he's going to he's going to be like a giant tree. I know there's other people of this network that have picked you. Actually, a former foe of yours, Andrew Hartley, who who had watched your Mayweather video and was actually very impressed with what you uh, you demonstrated there. Um, he actually gave you the nod as far as um, beating Klitschko in some discussions we had. And, you know, again, that was one of your arch nemesis. I know that that's in the past. But, uh, yeah. you know, people that you're, you at one point were, I guess, enemies or just not associated with you are picking you to beat. How's that feel? That you're actually changing people's you know, views on things. Oh. Like I said, I mean, um, everybody um, on the night I beat uh, Klitschko, everybody's going to, there ain't going to be no, the the word hater will not be in the English vocabulary. 
that, that <laughs> night, man. The word haters. I mean, look, these guys are uh, they're all deluded, jealous people, man. They're, you know that they know I they know I made it to the to the very top of the top. There's nothing more I can do. I mean, look, magazines, shirts, knockouts, beating big names, number one ranked, undefeated, box. I mean, what else can I do? Hey, don't, hey, don't forget rap song and a remix to a rap song. And a song. great rap song. Hey, that that was some nice work, man. Seriously, the lyrics very true. Uh, the the other one and this one and um, all the rap songs. You had the Bone Thugs and Harmony. Uh, uh, yeah, Bone Thugs well. and Harmony. That was sick. I mean, they're they're making another one. They're, they're making another one. Oh, no, I don't know if AT Jesus is gonna have to turn the heat up after that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah, that, that, that song, that song today, um, yeah, that that was great. That was great. Uh, I listened to it like eight times, man. <laughs> that was a great song. As a lot of people are, are buzzing about it, but but regardless, a lot of people buzzing about Charlie King Z money selling off. You know, there's the That's right. Twenty-one I mean, and zero in January. Stay Twenty-one tuned, in man. January. Twenty-two and zero in July. July World Heavyweight Champ. You know he's gonna put his UBF titles on the line against the titles that Vladimir Klitschko has. Yeah, I'm going to try to make the weight. I'm going to try to make the weight and uh, take all his... The fight's happening regardless whether I make it or not. But um, I'm going to try to make the weight and take all of his belts, man. We're looking for it. And we're, I'm looking forward to it. The, the biggest, best fight out there that can be made. Yeah, never a dull fight. moment with Charlie Zelenoff. You never know what to expect. Unpredictable. <laughs> Very, 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 again, once again, I really appreciate you sitting down and, uh, uh, you know, spending this time with you, and, and no I, I, which I think was a, a phenomenal interview. Anybody, yeah. whether you're, whether you, you, you like or dislike Charlie Zelenoff, uh, very true from the heart interview, and I think this will definitely change a lot of people's uh, minds that may not like it. It may be jealous, and it may see here, he is not just a, a, a hard-punching, fat, destructive boxer, but he's also a human being and uh great time tonight, man, Charlie. And I gotta, again I gotta thank you for, for, for having this little uh interview with me today and we'll see what the future holds and hopefully we can no get problem. you back on sometime in the future, man. No problem, man. Uh thank you. All right everybody. It's a pleasure. We're gonna let we're gonna let everybody go out once again if you heard it in the top of this uh the show. We're gonna let everybody take out here. I uh, appreciate the champ's time. He's, I know he's going to be training again this week. Uh, yep. We're going to take you out with the, with the King Z Money remix. January, we're going to score a highlight reel KO, man, and then taking Klitschko out, man, give Klitschko that fourth loss, man. All right, yo. King Z Money remix, taking it out. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Take care. Peace. Yeah. Jesus. King Z Money remix. 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 Yes.